I love Buzzy Druton, both as a person and as a drummer. He was a terrific drummer. He's definitely underrated. He, he had a special thing with the bass drum. Incidentally, he said that, and you know, Charlie Parker recorded a tune called Buzzy. Buzzy said that was named for him. You know, in Boston, and they got friendly. So Buzzy is actually on a pretty boppish thing with Charlie Mariano and some other people that was recorded in Boston early on before he hooked up. I really got to know him when he hooked up with Ruby. Uh, and uh, Buzzy was a sweet guy. And uh, he had a brother, Al, who uh, was a clarinetist. It's quite uh, popular in Boston. Uh, and that's Buzzy, I think I first met Buzzy actually at Storyville in Boston. Uh, there was a great downstairs band for a while. You know, George Ween is a pretty good piano player. Uh, there were always critics who jumped on him because of who he was, you know, uh, without really paying attention to what he was playing. He's a good piano player. And uh, the band was Beche, Vic, and or Big Chief, and uh, Buzzy, and uh, was there a bass player? It may have been a bass player. That might have been John Field, who was a Boston character. John Field was a very good bass player who was an absolute authority on Ellington and knew musically almost every Ellington composition, including lots of obscure ones. He knew the right changes and stuff for those. So anyway, that, that was a hell of a band. And, and, and George fit in very well. There was no problem with George being the pianist. I made the mistake like so many, you know, I was in, although I'm usually not influenced by critics, but I hadn't heard that much of George's piano. And uh, I was talking to Vic, and Vic made the record Vic's Boston Story, which has George on piano. And uh, I said, you know, I really liked the record, and I said, you know, m maybe. We would have been, you know, could have had another piano player. So Vic just looked at me, he gave me a glare. He looked at me like this, he said, it could have been a lot worse, he said. <laughs> and then when uh, Buck Clayton's band, the band that he had, that really nice band that recorded for Columbia, Nancy's Fancy and all that stuff with uh, Emmett Barry and, uh, you know, uh, and they had a piano player named Al Williams, and they had Jimmy Rushing. When they were touring, George was booking them, and George was traveling with them. Uh, after the first couple of concerts, Jimmy went to Buck and said, I want George to play for me. I don't want Al Williams. Al was a pretty fancy, good piano player, but the, the Jimmy did not like him as an accompanist, so he put him short. Which I think was something of a compliment. Yeah, that's right. George tells the story himself about when Lester Young was going to play at Storyville, and he asked, you know, who's going to be in the rhythm section, and George mentioned himself on piano. So Lester said, well, he said, you know, he thought, silent for a while and he said well he said if you don't mind I'd like I, I, I'd like to hear you <laughs> you know okay. so George said he auditioned for him and Lester said okay you can play for me <laughs> George has a very good sense of humor which you needed to have in in, in his position you know. the other drummer that nobody talks about that I was going to ask you about is Maury Fell. Oh, Maury. Maury was wonderful. He was another one. Maury was great on brushes. Great brush man. We see him uh, with B Benny Goodman. Uh, there's a film clip uh, with Maury on drums. It's uh, very good. I think they do Three Little Words or something. It's in, it's in a feature film where they have a, have a bit there. 
Maury, unfortunately, you know how he died. The cigarette fell asleep in bed with a cigarette bed caught on fire and it killed him. I used to see Maury at uh, what's his name's jazz parties. Uh, oh. Dick Gibson? Yeah. <laughs> Dick Gibson insisted that he had studied with, uh, with William Faulkner. He had studied and written short stories. You know. Gibson was a character. Uh, but uh, yeah, Maury was, Maury was a fine drummer. He's very good with the uh, summer cum laude Freeman Condon band and done a lot of other things, but he was especially good on brushes. He is excellent on the fortunately captured on the radio shows that Dr. Jazz, what was his name, Amy Govan, he, that was issued on Storyville uh, with Bobby Hackett, Vic, Gene Cedric, uh, Teddy Roy on piano, uh, uh, Jimmy Jafrida, and uh, uh, Maury is on drums on some of them, and he's good. Oh, yeah, he was a fine drummer. Nice guy, too. I never got to know him that well, but he's very pleasant. Of course, when it comes to drummers, there's the one and only Zudi Singles, and, and Zudi was a monster drummer. When he was at his best, and that was usually when he was in the position of, you know, running the show more or less. Uh, people would defer to him. One guy who really knew how to handle Zudi was Roy Eldridge, who had worked with him in Chicago fairly early in Roy's career when they had that great band at the Three Deuces, and of course they recorded together. So Roy knew uh, how to handle Zudi, but Zudi was really not somebody who was well suited to be a sideman. He, you know, he had his own ideas about tempos, you know, which he drummer. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, if he wasn't happy with the leader, it could be somewhat tense, but uh, I don't know exactly what happened between him and Louie back in the 20s because they were such great friends and they were such a great team, but then they did have some kind of falling out. Um, at the end, they finally got back together again, but uh, Zudi was terrific uh, and uh, a very funny guy, great sense of humor, very knowledgeable about music, full of great stories. Uh, he and Wild Bill Davison were great friends. They had known each other way back in, 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 in Chicago. And I once uh, visited Zudi, who lived at the Alvin. Zudi and Lester Young both lived at the Alvin. They were good friends. Uh, you wouldn't think of Lester and Judy together, I mean, but but they were both like Lester was born right near New Orleans in Mississippi. Uh, they were really good friends. Uh, but one time, while Bill was visiting, and uh, they started reminiscing, you know, and while Bill had this big band, which uh, Frank Teschmacher was a member of, which was destroyed by the unfortunate death of uh, Teschmacher in a, an accident with Bill, which Bill wrongly got blamed for. It wasn't his fault. It was a cab that went through a red light and hit them. You know, it wasn't Bill's fault at all. But Bill, even then, as a young person was known to be a drinker, so immediately, you know, the story was that it was his fault, wasn't his fault at all. It took him a long time to live that down. He left Chicago and kind of that moved to Milwaukee and then came to New York. But he and Zudi were reminiscing and uh, it was fascinating. But they were talking about Tesh and uh, Zudi agreed, you know, uh, Bill used to say that, that 
Tesh was the best lead alto he had ever heard, you know, and uh, Zudi had actually witnessed that big band uh, of Bills and said it was a great band. And you know who was writing for them, among others? was Reginald Forsyth, who is a very interesting topic in himself. And Forsyth was also... Bill insisted, and Zudi backed him up, that Deep Forest, which became Earl Hines' theme song, was originally written for Bill's band. So there you go. Zudi's wife, Marge, uh, had been a professional, a very good piano player. She was the sister of Charlie Kreth, with whom Judy made his recording debut. Charlie Kreth was a fine trumpet player who had a band on, on the Mississippi, and uh, recorded for OK. Uh, but Marge was, uh, according to people who heard her play when she was young, was really fine pianist. Uh, she deferred to Zudi, but they were, you know, a great couple. Somebody who was a really supportive guy uh, without making himself, you know, noise about it was Nessui Erdogan. And Nessui was very fond of Zudi. And when Zudi uh, got into health problems, relatively late in life. Uh, unless we got him the best doctors and would have uh, his chauffeur pick him up. He would have to pick up Sudi at the Alvin in his Cadillac and drive him to his doctor. Nessui was a gentleman. He was a, he was very different from his brother. Not that I, 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 I like Ahmed too, but uh, they were very different. And Nessui was really, you know how, you know, fond he was of Wilbur de Paris and that whole band there that he kept going for. But he was really good to Zudi. And he helped other musicians when they were down and out. Uh, you know. 